Today I will be showing you how to turn an old computer you may already have lying around the house or one that you can pick up cheaply online into a DVR server which will allow you to access live TV as well as recordings from a number of devices both inside and outside of your house utilizing software called Channels DVR. Once set up this provides a traditional whole home DVR solution with a guide, series recordings, pausing and rewinding live TV, along with more advanced features that you may not typically find in DVR you would rent from a cable company. Links for the devices and services shown in this video, as well as some alternatives, will be in the description below. Starting off, I'll warn you that while this does cost significantly less than cable, satellite, and the fully featured live streaming TV services like YouTube TV, it's not free. And it will require you to pay for at least one subscription and possibly hardware, depending on your wants and situation. I'll go over a few possible scenarios. I'm showing a few possible options here to give you an idea of the cost involved. But there are a ton of different ways to approach this depending on the stations you want. For example, Philo doesn't offer stations like ESPN, so if that's important to you, then you'd want to replace that service with Sling TV or another provider. In all of the examples shown, I'm assuming that you're using an old computer that doesn't add any cost, and that you're only using one TV which doesn't already have a compatible streaming device. In option one, you're receiving only your local over-the-air stations, along with a few stations that are provided with your Channels Plus subscription, which I'll go over later. In options two and three, your experience will be more akin to a cable service, with the main difference being if you prefer to use Lowcast instead of an antenna and tuner. Lowcast is a streaming service which offers live local stations in a few markets around the U.S., and it requires a $5.50 subscription to use with Channels DVR. The long-term cost savings with choosing option 2 over option 3 is obvious, but sometimes an antenna just isn't an option for some homes, or you just don't want to deal with the hardware. As you can see though, all of these options come in at a much lower price than most cable TV, as well as services like YouTube TV, which at the time of this recording cost $65 a month. Since Lowcast isn't yet available in Minnesota, I'll show the setup of option 2 in this video. As you can see, I've already installed one of those very attractive rooftop antennas on our house. If you're wondering why there are two, well, I'm not tall enough to reach the old one, so there it shall remain until the eventual heat death of the universe. Here's the tuner I'll be using. The newer models look different, but as far as the scope of this video, they function the same. The way these tuners are hooked up is you plug the antenna into the coax jack, and then use an ethernet cable to hook it up to your router. Once it's hooked up and powered on, it will become discoverable on your network. Now let's move over to the computer. I'll be using a MacBook Pro from 2012 that I recently picked up for $100. I replaced the hard drive with an SSD, but otherwise this is just a stock 8-year-old used computer, and in my testing it was able to run three separate streaming devices simultaneously while still not maxing out the CPU or RAM. But obviously, your mileage will vary based on the type of computer you're using. What you'll need to do at this point is go to GetChannels.com and sign up for your subscription and install the DVR software from there. You'll also need to go ahead and subscribe for any other streaming services that you'll be using with your DVR at this point. Once installed, you'll arrive at this welcome screen where you'll need to log into your Channels Plus account. Next, you'll have to tell it where to save the DVR recordings, and once you've got all that done, it's time to set up your sources. Right away, it's discovered my tuner on the network, so all I have to do there is just tell it my zip code so that it can pull the appropriate guide data. Next, I'll add Philo as a source. You can see that when I click on Add Source, I'm shown three options. We'll be using TV Everywhere to add Philo. You'll notice that there are a lot of options here, including cable services. If you have access to a cable login, because maybe you have cable TV service but don't want to pay for a DVR, or maybe this is a setup at a vacation home, you can add it here instead of paying for an additional service like Philo. But for this example, we'll go ahead and sign into Philo. Once signed in, your computer will begin scanning all the TV Everywhere stations in order to see which ones you have access to. Then it needs to download all the guide data for the stations you have. As you can see here, Channels DVR gives it 107%. Okay, now we're ready to go. You can see that the tuner has picked up 45 stations and Philo has picked up 96. Now let's go to the main page. There's one option I suggest changing all the way at the bottom. You can enable some local networks to come in over TV everywhere, which may help in the event of wanting to record more simultaneous local stations than you have tuners for. 
Remote DVR is disabled for me because I have it enabled on my main server, but you'll want to make sure that's enabled if you want to access this from outside the home. Alright, now we're all set up. Let's check out the station lineup. First, let's take a look at the antenna. This is just a quick summary because your reception and regional stations will vary, but obviously here we have all the usual local broadcasts. Which stations you get over an antenna is a broader subject for a future video. Now on to Philo, which as you can see does provide a lot of major cable networks. Keep in mind that this lineup may change, but as of the recording of this video, these are the stations I receive. One thing to keep in mind about these TV Everywhere sources is that they are streaming through the internet so they don't rely on your HD home run tuners so you can watch and record these regardless of how many tuners may be in use at the time. Lastly, Channels Plus has a lot of news and an otherwise kind of random assortment of stations that you may or may not find useful. Throughout the time I've been using the service, however, they have been constantly adding stations to it so again this is just the list of what you'll get as of the recording of this video. Finally, on to the apps. Currently, in addition to the web app that you can navigate to using the my.channelsdvr.net web address, there are also apps for iOS, iPadOS, Apple TV, Fire TV, Android, and Android TV operating systems. Notably, Roku is absent. The developers have said that Roku hardware struggles too much in decoding the video to offer a good enough experience, so they've focused on the aforementioned operating systems. I should mention that if you have an NVIDIA Shield TV set-top box, you can actually run the DVR server software directly from that device, completely bypassing the need for a computer running the server software. I won't show the installation process on every device, but I want to make sure to mention that you want to download the free Channels DVR app, and not their paid app. This app is included free with your subscription. The paid app is just for connecting to the HD Home Run Tuner separately from a DVR setup. I'll be showing the functionality of the app briefly here on my Apple TV 4K, but the experience is largely the same on every device that I've used. Once you launch the app the first time, it should locate the DVR on the network automatically, and you should be able to just go ahead and start watching and recording TV shows now. The stations on here will be different from the ones I've listed previously because this is running off of my main server. As you can see, the navigation once you've gotten to this point is very familiar if you've used DVRs in the past. From here on out, you should be able to navigate through like any normal DVR, subscribing to series passes, watching and deleting recordings, as well as pausing and rewinding live TV. The last thing that I want to show is probably my favorite feature. Once the recording is completed, the DVR software will go through the video and marks the beginning and end of the commercial segments. The commercials are indicated by the darker sections of the timeline. This allows your device to automatically skip commercials for you. In my experience, this has been extremely accurate, but the nice thing is that since it doesn't delete the commercials, you always have the flexibility to go back and see something it might have accidentally skipped over. Okay, well that's about it. Obviously this software goes much deeper, but for the purpose of today's video, I just wanted to give you the info you'll need to get up and running. I'll leave you with some further tips to consider, and if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and I will try to respond. In the description, there's a link to the channel's community page, which has been a great help to me over time as I've used this software, and I highly recommend that if you have any issues, to take a look over there as well. Thanks for watching.